Praise the Lord. Welcome to today's edition of our daily broadcast, The State of the Union. And we are still around the Word of God, which says, Tell my people to return to me. And we have been at it now talking about in recent times, today being the 10th day in particular, talking about the returning to the Word of God, returning to the Word of God, that is to say, tell my people to return to my Word. Tell my people to return to my word. Now, we have said quite a bit about this business of the practice of the word of God. This business of returning to God's word. God does everything by his word. Whatever God will do, he first speaks about it. Whatever God begins to speak about, that's what on his that is what is on his mind to do. So every time you are confronted with the word of God, particularly on a subject, you are being confronted with the mind or the will or the disposition or the perspective or the plan, purpose, patterns of God. Because he is his word, he is revealed in his word. So God reveals himself to us by his or in his word. So when he says, tell my people to return to me in my word, what he is essentially saying, among several other things, is simply return to me. In the dimension of my word return to me as I have revealed myself in my word in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and nothing was made that was made except by the word of God and that word became flesh physically tangible so when God wants to create when God wants to bring into our natural existence something that currently does not exist he does two things in particular by the agency of his word there are in fact three things he starts to talk about that thing He speaks the thing into existence. And then he calls the thing which is currently not in existence as if it is. So God might say to you, I have made you rich. And you look in your bank account and there's less than a hundred bucks there. The question would be, are you going to walk by sight? Or are you going to walk by faith? If you hear a word which says, I have already provided for you. Now see, a man who is building a refinery, for example, or a man who is building a spacecraft, he wants to go to Mars. So he's building a spacecraft. People at that level, if God says to them, I have already provided for you, you know, of course, that that is at the level of billions of dollars, I guess. But a man who just wants to eat a meal, and God says to him, I have already provided for you. 
it is the same word but different capacities of delivery so when you see for example in second peter chapter 1 verse 3 where it says that god has already provided everything which pertain to life and godliness according to our knowledge of christ when you read that he has already provided to the man who wants to build an, an aircraft or a spacecraft and then to the man who just wants a meal he says he has already provided he calls those things that are not as though they are so he says that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed but right now you may be experiencing symptoms of one some kind of sickness but he says you were healed by the stripes of Jesus which will be more than 2,000 years ago but you know that you're sick right now I mean you're feeling it in your body and God is saying I've already healed you he speaks as if it is already physically tangible that's why it doesn't make sense it's not supposed to make sense it makes faith the wisdom by which God speaks. He already said in his written word that it is foolishness to men. He already says that it is foolishness to men. So if you try to reason out what the word of God may be saying, it won't make sense because God speaks as if it already exists. It is one of the things he does. He speaks things into existence but he speaks them as if they already exist. He speaks them as if they already exist. So when he says, tell my people to return to my word, part of the reason may just be that we have been operating for too long according to what makes sense. Not according to faith, not according to what is provided for in his word, but what makes sense in our natural world. So while we understand in our natural world that a man gets ahead by hard work, by diligent hard work, and we call it the dignity of labor, God does not necessarily put you ahead by reason of your physical hard work, but by reason of what he chooses to do and he speaks otherwise David should not have qualified to be made king left to man his senior brother the firstborn would have been anointed king why man looks on the outside man looks on what is reasonable what makes sense what follows naturally Remember, back in the day, this firstborn was more likely to be chosen than anybody else. Especially in the case of making one a king, the firstborn is a man. And then you look, behold the stature of the man, he has the stature of a king. Especially as the current king had the same stature. It made sense for Samuel the prophet to fall for that and he was going to but God said to him I have rejected this one what do you think that God was saying to Samuel when he uttered those words because I have searched I don't see what Eliab did I think that's his name 
I don't see what he did which would have warranted those words, I have rejected him. So to me, a more plausible explanation would be he was rejected because in the flesh he looked like it. And God will never accept the person of a man. Never. Even if he chooses somebody who looks like it, like it, he will not be chosen because he looks like it. He will be chosen because God chose him. And he will not be chosen because of some physical attribute or capacity that he has. He will be chosen because God chose him and then God will empower him with the necessary capacity. So when God first told me to go and become a pastor of a church, it didn't make sense. In my heart of hearts, I said, no. I don't know how to manage people. You didn't train me to manage people. In fact, if anything at all, you have raised me up to tell people your mind and go my way. The way prophets behave. He comes to you and points his finger and says the thing to you and he walks. So I thought, until I came to the understanding, if you depend on the natural attributes, God will not be in it. It has to be based on his word and his capability, which we call the anointing. So soon after I accepted and I started, God began to enlarge my heart. He began to enlarge my heart. He began to give me things like compassion. He began to make me consider people, consider how they feel or how they might feel. I didn't have all those things before that. I didn't have space for people in my heart, only God and whatever he was saying to me. And so however you wanted to react to the word of God was none of my business. I'll just tell you what I know is the word of God and I move. God does everything by his word. So whatever he's going to do, we take our example. For example, that is from the book of Psalms where it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. He sent his word. Think about it. In Psalm 23, the psalmist said, Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Think about it. How will goodness and mercy follow, I guess it's David, how will goodness and mercy follow David? Except that goodness and mercy have some kind of life capacity to be able to follow. To follow means you change location from one place to another based on how your, 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 your target is changing location. Follow. He says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Jesus said, John 6, 63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Let's leave the life part for a minute. That they are spirit means exactly what? What do you think? He says they are spirit. That means they are not flesh. First of all. But he says they are spirit. What is the meaning of spirit? He says man that's a born again Christian is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. So man is a spirit spirit that lives in a body and he has the capacities the capabilities of his soul he can think, he can feel 
it can relate to physical phenomena taste smell sight hearing so if he is if man is spirit it means that when jesus said that the word of god is spirit there is something about man which is akin to that of the word of god both of them are spirit both of them are spirit but then jesus said john 4 24 god is spirit now let's take our cue from there if god is spirit and we have a rough idea of all the capacities of god at least as, as written in the scriptures it means god can move god can see god can hear god can think god can speak god can do things so the word of god is spirit just like god just like man what does that tell you the word that jesus speaks the word of god is a spirit being it's a spiritual entity if we were to step in the realm of the spirit for example the way you see a fellow human being you probably be seeing other spirits called the word of god for example he said they are spirit and they are life we generally agree that angels are spirits yes jesus said the word of god is spirit now if the word of god is spirit and we understand that spirits can change location just like god then we can understand that the word of god which is spirit can follow a human being about so when it says i think it's psalm 105 verse 20 where it says he sent his word he sent his word And heal them of their sicknesses and deliver them from their destructions how do you send your word the same way you send a person hey come and go to so 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 place and deliver this message for me God sent his word we know that John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that that word was with God and is God and that word became flesh which we call Jesus so that word is an entity in the realm of the spirit by God as it were it says it was with God and it was God and today that word exists in heaven as the person of Jesus Christ because that word became flesh which we call Jesus okay I'm trying to explain something So if God, if, if goodness and mercy, the word of God, can follow a human being called David, and now it says he sent his word, and Jesus said that that word is spirit, do we begin to understand that when God wants to do something, he sends his word that word comes to you we will discuss and the word of the lord came to me saying we will discuss that tomorrow in our next broadcast but for today let us confine ourselves to he sent his word at the receiving end the person will be saying and the word of the lord came to me permit my english how does the word of god let me speak it normally how does the word of god comes to you i was going to say how did the word of god came to him he said the word of god came to me see so the word of god speaks the word of god has the capacity to be sent and then to arrive at a destination and then to do certain things god wanted to heal them and he wanted to save them from their destructions he sent his word to do the job now, what am I getting at, really? Because the Word of God has all these attributes and capacities, okay. 
whatever God wants to do, He simply sends the relevant word. One. And on the other side, in James, uh, sorry, in John chapter 17, this is what Jesus had to say about the business of the word of God. John chapter 17, verse 8. He says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. Why is the word of God employing this? Is the word adjective? Why is the word of God employing all this? I don't know what it is. Adjective, I think. To describe itself. I have given them the words which you gave me. And they have received the word. God sends his word. The word of God can follow. Does that not sound like it's talking about a human being? But it's not a human being. Jesus said they are spirit. And the word became flesh. He says, and they have received them. When God wants to do something in your circumstance, he sends his word. He sends the appropriate word for that matter. He sends that word your way. all we have to do is receive the word now when you receive the word two things will happen you will begin to speak according to that word you will adjust your life and circumstance to that word that's one and then the word will become flesh it will manifest that which it is carrying he said, so shall my word not return to me. You see, that's another word. The word of God can be sent. The word of God can be received. The word of God can be given. The word of God can follow. And the word of God can return. Isaiah 55, 11. He says, so shall the word which has gone out of my, my mouth, it will not return to me void. So the word of God can be void. Just that God says it will not come back to him void. Why? It will accomplish that for which I sent it. Which means the word of God is like rain. When it hits the, the soil, it delivers the capacity for the plants. To grow and produce fruit it delivers it to the soil and the plant receives it from the soil and we get it as fruit from the plant Rain. the word of God has all these capacities it can be sent, it can follow it can be received, it can return it can be void and then it can be a fruit he says it shall not return to me void but it shall fulfill the purpose for which I spoke it. When God wants to do something, he simply sends his word. Us is to receive the word and then begin to adjust our circumstance according to that word. That opens our space for the word to fulfill the thing that it is carrying. So that now we begin to understand why God says, tell my people to return to my word. Tell my people to return to my word. There are things God wants to manifest, but he can't because we have turned our backs on his word. Otherwise, why are we discussing the word of God? The word of God wants to manifest, but it needs a landing pad and therefore a launching pad it needs to first of all come to me and be received and then be allowed to transform or cause the necessary changes in our circumstance by what we believe by what we say by what we do and in the process of that 
the word of God will fulfill the reason it was sent, whatever the word may be. So here today I am presenting, or the word of the Lord is coming to you saying, return to the dimension of the word of God. Quit the level of man, reasoning with the brain, depending on brown or brain, depending on your human capacities. I'm not saying that if you want to lift a bucket of water, you will tear the bucket of water, be thou lifted up. That's not necessary. You can lift up the bucket. But when it became necessary, the word of the Lord came saying, O ye gates, be ye lifted up. But those gates did not need physical human hands. They were not physical human gates. <coughs> so in the realm of the spirit, the word of God can cause spiritual gates to be lifted. And then we will see the result in the natural, for example, by a human being being raised back to life, as in the case of Jesus. Or we will see, for example, an earthquake forcing the tomb where he was buried to be opened. Because, as it were, the stone that was rolled over the mouth of that tomb represented a gate. And that physical body couldn't come out unless that gate was removed. So, is it possible that God employed the angels of an earthquake to move that stone out of the way? Not that the angels could not have, by one finger, pushed that stone out of the way. Of course. But the point is, the word of God came saying, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, for the King of glory wants to pass. God does things by the agency of his word. And we must, we must come to terms with the truths, not just in his word or of his word, but the truths about the word of God. The truths about the capacity, capacities, capabilities of the word of God. We must come to terms with what the word of God is and can do. We keep repeating. God does everything by his word. Everything God wants to do, he first starts to talk about it. But when we hear the word of God, what do we do with the word of God? Becomes the issue. Do you receive it? He that receives a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Yes? He that receives me receives the Father who sent me. There is a receiving part that we need to key into in the business of the practice of the Word of God. In the business of working with God, we must become practitioners. Practitioners of the Word of God. A lot of times, more often than not, I'm, like, I'm, I'm more likely to ask somebody what has God said to you than what do you think. Not in the business of thinking things. That is not to say that I don't, I don't engage my brain as, as it becomes this. That's, please don't, 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 don't be nasty. Don't get me wrong. But when we come to a crossroads and we have to make a decision, how do you make your decisions? I once said to somebody who had lost some money in the financial industry because he bought shares in a certain place and within a week there was a catastrophe and 10 million naira worth of shares became like paper in a week and he lost a lot of money and when I was told I said well not that I, not that I don't have empathy but I can't feel sorry for such a person because when you people want to take decisions, you employ consultants to tell you about a situation in the future. Yet, God has such consultants who can help you with the future by simply asking God. But because you continue to deny God, you never want to find out what God thinks. And so each time he frustrates your diviners, he frustrates your wisdom, he just to let you know that there's a superior place to operate from. 
but we insist on operating with our brain. So what do you want God to do? So he says, now tell my people to return to my word. See, God can determine the future and change the past. Or change the effects of the past. past and create a brand new future for you. Just like his word. But we have to first of all return to the practice of his word. And I'm out of time. But be certain. Tomorrow, we will look at, and the word of the Lord came to me. How does the word of the Lord came to you? I meet the English. How does the word of the Lord come to you? How does it happen? If we are returning to the word of the Lord, then we must understand how it comes. The word of God has capacity to come to you. The word of God can be sent. The word of God can follow. The word of God is to be received. The word of God, the, capa the word of God has capacity to produce the result that it carries, to, to, to produce into our physical lives the potential that it carries. God wants to heal you, he sends his word. You receive that word, it's going to produce healing in your circumstance. Let's come back to the place of the word of God and let's begin to see miraculous changes in the name of Jesus. See you again, same time tomorrow. God bless you.